Amen. Even in the time of rejoicing, the enemy will try to weigh us down. Amen. Even in this time of Thanksgiving, this week that we're in, we're giving thanks to the Lord. But yet some of us, we can't praise God. Amen. It's because the enemy will weigh us down and have us to look at self and, and look at um, the things that have happened in our life through the year and through the years, you know, and look at the hardships we're facing. Some of us, we're looking at the, the heartaches and, 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 and just the pain that we suffer. And, and we just cannot focus on the Lord because of our problems. Amen? But I thank God that even in what you're going through, you ought to give thanks. Amen? See, many of us, praise God, in this year, we've waged war on many fronts. Some of us, we've had to deal with sickness and disease. Some of us, we've had to deal with that spirit of lack. Some of us, uh, we've been heartbroken this year. Amen? But we still got to give thanks. It's something when you're waging war. When you feel like you're almost there, here comes something else that you got to deal with. Anybody there? You know, you, you feel like, I've conquered this thing. And all of a sudden, it, it either uh, 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 takes a, a, another route, praise God, and sprouts out this way and that way and have you kind of double-minded. Just, Lord, what do I do? Amen. But we got to continue to fight. And we got to fight a good fight. We can, and one thing I found out about being in warfare, you can't fight laying down. Even with a common cold, you got to get up. If you don't get up, the mucus will settle in, and, you, and all of a sudden, you sound like Barry White. <laughs> you know, all that stuff. Just, just get up and walk around and let this stuff be, be loose. You know, the enemy will weigh you down if you lay down. He'll sit on you. Amen. He he assigns spirits to just rest up on you with that heaviness that you are not able to move. So you might as well fight. You're in the fight, you might as well fight. See, we can't be like those boys over there in Iran that were trained to fight, given equipment, and when it was time to fight, they wouldn't put up their dupes. We got to be willing to fight. God has equipped us, praise God, to wage war against the enemy. So when the enemy shows his, his head, we got to fight against him. Hey Amen. You might as well fight. Now, you, you can fight or either be beat, beat up by the bullets. I mean, that's one thing I learned years ago. You got to stand up against the bullets. And once the enemy understands that you're willing to fight, he'll go somewhere else. Amen. I'll go find somebody weaker, somebody that will receive what I released over their life. But when we come to the knowledge of the truth, all we got to do is stand for the truth, praise God, and God is with us. Amen? So we got to fight a good fight. Amen? One thing that we got to understand, if we have not fought in the spirit realm, you have not conquered your enemy. You have not conquered your enemy if you have not tapped into the spirit to understand where did this thing come from? Why is it still existing? What is giving it life? Why is is this thing reoccurring? Amen. So some of us, we're in a fight like that. This, this, you know, we, we feel like we've conquered a thing and it shows up again. It's because we never entered into the spirit realm to find out what is the root of this spirit. See, some things that we're dealing with come from generational curses. Amen. Some things uh, we're dealing with come from a mindset, praise God, of our environment. Amen. So we got to get to the root. God, why am I still fighting this same fight? When others have gone on and others have gained victory over this thing and moved out ahead of me, God, I'm doing everything that I think to be right. God, I'm tired and I'm coming to church. Uh, uh, you know, I, I'm not throwing nothing in nobody's yard. God, I, I'm just trying to be good, but yet and still, I don't have the victory. You will not be victorious until you tap into the spirit realm. 
Sometimes we got to understand, working three jobs is not going to get you out of poverty. Some of us, the enemy will give us the mindset, well, if you work a little bit harder, it's going to be all right. You find yourself working from Sunday to Sunday. My God, I, I, I love that Sunday and those holidays because it gives me double time, it gives me triple time, and God wants you to be in his presence. And the enemy wants you to work. Off the work I go that I won't owe no more. My God. But we got to get in the spirit realm that we might overcome poverty. Poverty is who not, we, who, it's not who we are. God has called us to prosper and be in health even as our soul prospers. Amen. That's, God, that's the will of the Lord. Find out what God's will is for you and yours. And I believe even as we come up out of poverty, we ought to bring somebody with us. Amen. God ought to give us creative ideas for our family, for our community, that, that, that we'll set a whole community free. I believe we can do it. Amen. So to the businessman, Extending your hours may not be the answer to your business success. Well, you know, you know, my wife and I, we, we've been in business for years. And sometimes when things get a little rough, the, you, you're trying to say, what can I do different to make this thing work? You're doing this, you're doing that, you're promoting this, and you, you got billboards, you, you got somebody standing on the corner with a sign, and oh my God, and now you got the internet, you're pushing this out, and, and it still don't seem to work. But you got to get to the root cause of why are we not prospering? Why am I still fighting this same fight after three years, after four years, after ten years? Why are we not growing? Why are we not developing? Amen. We've got to get in the spirit. We got to understand if you're sick, praise God. Wikipedia is not going to give you a cure for your disease. You know, we, we, we can understand some symptoms about it, praise God, by going and doing research, but you got to get to the root cause. Why is this thing attacking me? What, what, how was this thing open to me? Amen? So we got to understand that our victory is won in the spirit realm. Amen? So many of us, we've been crying out to the Lord for help. Lord, help me. Lord, send somebody. Lord, help me to win the lottery. Something. Do something. Amen. We got desperate. Amen. Praise God. So we got to understand that God hears us. He hears the righteous. God hears the prayers of the righteous. Amen. When we turn our heart toward him. Amen. When we go before him, praise God, boldly, he hears us. When we are holding up uh, righteous hands, he is aware of that. But yet and still, there may seem to be a hindrance in our answer. Let's go to Daniel. You got to understand that the enemy... He opposes every answer to our, to our prayer in the spirit realm. Amen? That's where we got to gain the victory, y'all. These things that have not been manifest in our life, we got to go up in the spirit and get it. Anybody with me? We got to go up in the spirit. Anybody ready to go? This day, somebody's going to be delivered. This day, somebody's going to gain understanding. This day, there's going to be some spirits broken off of your life this day because this is a solemn assembly today. Amen. Daniel 10 and 1. It says, in the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel. Has God revealed anything to you? I know many of you have dreams. Many of you have visions. And God has shown you how he wants to use you. God has is, God is given you a clear picture of where he wants to take you. But you just can't seem to get there. Amen. So a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name called Belshazzar, and the thing was true. 
but the time appointed was long. That's what some of us said. God, I know what you're saying is true. God, I weighed this thing out. God, I'm comparing it to your word and your will for my life, but God, this thing is long. Anybody saying, God, when? God, when? God, my vision board, the sun is hidden and is about to fade. God, when? It's getting discolored and disfigured, and you're crying out, God, when? Anybody there? You understand what I'm saying? So the Lord, praise God, had to deal with Daniel, praise God, about what had been revealed. He said, the thing was true, but the time upon it was long. And he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. You know, anybody ever been there? You just understand how God wants to use you. Not only you, but others. You, you got so much vision that you got vision for others too. And you're just wondering, God, when are you going to move for us? God, I, I, I'm a man of faith. I'm a woman of faith. And I've seen what you said. When are you going to do this thing? Anybody ever made preparation for a thing? You know, it, it, it has not been manifested, but all of a sudden you're just doing things for when it comes that you can receive it. That's what some of us are. We've made preparation. I remember when my, 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 my wife had vision for a new house. Here when I started getting some boxes, y'all, and the thing came to pass. I think she had tapped up into the spirit ram because, you know, when she took me to the house, it was in the middle of the night. I couldn't see it, but she could see it. You know, back in that day, the community wasn't as, as lit up at night as it was then. So she trying to port the house to him, and I'm trying to see it. But she was seeing it because she had tapped into the spirit and said, it's mine. See? So sometimes you got to start making preparation when you know that that thing is true. Amen. Even though the time has been long, praise God. He said, he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. In those days, our Daniel was mourning three full weeks. I got anybody there? God, I'm praying. Oh, God, I'm fasting. You know, the old folks, I'm turning my plate down, God. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to seek your faith. I'm doing all I know to do. Lord, now I'm waiting on you. He said, I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Anybody dealing with you? God dealing with anybody up in here? Calling you to a fast, calling you to consecrate yourself, calling you to be set apart for his use, but you're still waiting. Amen. Still waiting, still doing what God called you to do. Amen. Praise God. So it was after this time that, that, that Daniel was fasting, praise God, that God began to manifest himself to him. As we drop down in the 10th verse, it says, and behold, and hand touched me. Amen. See, God has sent, praise God, an angel to minister to him. Praise God. In the form of a man. And he began to manifest himself to Daniel. And nobody around him could see it. All of his friends right there, but they couldn't see it. They couldn't see it. You see, you have to understand, sometimes when you're crying out to the Lord, and God said, I'm going to take you up in the spirit realm that you might see me moving, everybody else is not going to see it. See, that's where some of us, we're missing it. God is trying to break this thing off of you. God is trying to open up this door, but you expect everybody to see what God is only allowing you to see. You understand what I'm saying? So for some of us, keep your eyes on the Lord. Everybody's not going to be able to go with you. Everybody's not going to get the revelation. Everybody's not going to get the understanding. Amen? So the hand, of, and, and, and it says, it was the hand of this man, praise God, and he touched me would call him to fall on his knees, praise God, with his palms down. And he said unto me, O oh, Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright unto thee, 
am I now sent? I understand where you are, Daniel, but I have been sent by God. First of all, you got to submit yourself to God. Fall on your face before him. Then you can be raised up that you might receive this revelation of what God is about to do in your life. Anybody there? See, some of us, praise God, we're crying out to God, we're crying out to God, but have you fallen on your face before him in desperation? It's nothing about like one of them desperate uh, prayers, you know. When you just fall on your face and get snotted before the Lord. I'll make it graphic for you. Amen. Every now and then you need a good snotting. Clear out some stuff. Amen. Praise God. See, some of us, we're too pretty to get some deliverance. Every time we're trying to get some deliverance, uh, we're sucking it back up. Let it go. Y'all just receive it the best you can. The best you can receive it. Amen. If you had to cut it out, cut it out. Just receive, praise God. I come to the altar trying to get delivered, and the enemy says, no, 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 don't cry. No, don't do this. You know, everybody going to watch you. What is? No, going to get free up in the house of God. Amen. Praise God. Where I stop at? Verse 10. I'm in 11 now. And he said to me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright, for unto thee am I now sent. I thank God that he's able to send somebody that's able to speak into our life and break something up off of us. See, sometimes when you're praying, praise God, you need some help. But some of us are too proud for help. God is trying to, trying to send deliverance, and we don't want nobody to help us. That's pride. Nobody can pray for me. Just me and God. Sometimes you need a word from the Lord. Through an anointed vessel. Amen. Praise God. So the, 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 the uh, angel, praise God, said unto Daniel, Fear not, Daniel, for the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard. And I am come for thy words. It's underlined in your Bible. I am come for thy words. See, God hears us when we pray. Amen. God, see, from the first day he began to pray, God heard in heaven. God began to dispatch angels on his behalf the very first day. Some of us are right there. We think God win. And God has already dispatched the angels. He's dispatched the answer. But I think until we break up in the spirit realm, we're not going to see the manifestation. From the first day he was sent. And he came for Daniel's words. The words that he had spoke. So our words, praise God, ought to line up and be in agreement with heaven. So when we speak, when we cry out, when we pray, God will set an answer because of those words. Words spoken in faith. Words spoke without doubt. Words that line up with the word. God said, I sent an answer for your words. Your words, praise God, that are uh, are not spoken in selfishness. Your words that are not spoken in greed. Your words that are not spoken in anger. Your words that are not based under in unforgiveness. I come because of your words. You know, that's why we got to speak what's true. We got to speak what come from the heart of God that he might send or the deliverer on our behalf. Amen. So he came. For the words that Daniel was speaking. And some of us, we like to just be silent in our prayers. God know my heart. God know my heart. Oh, he know my heart. Speak the word. That thing that's troubling you, let God hear you speak about that thing. That thing that you desire to do, tell God about it. That thing that you have passion for and that you've dreamed and seen and, and it's alive in your spirit, speak it out. God said, I'll send forth help 
to make that thing come to pass because of your words. There is power in the words. Oh, my God. We have creativity up inside of us through the words that we speak. The word of God said life and death is in the power of the tongue. Oh, my God. Some of us got to learn to speak some things. Speak some things. It's time out for the church being silent. Some of us, we have a prophetic voice, praise God. We're able to create some things in our community, on the campus, wherever we are, and we will just only speak. It's time out for the enemy keeping us silent. Amen. So Daniel, <laughs> praise God, was, was, was about to receive some help. But he said, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me. One and 20 days. 21 days I've been trying to get to you, boy. But I ran up into, some, into this strong demon, this prince that's over this region, and he withstood me. That's what's happening to some of us. The enemy is just trying to withstand stand against us. No, God, you can't release that in their life because if you release that over them, I know I've heard and I've seen what they will do with it. No! I'm going to block it. And that's what was ha happening to Daniel. The enemy was blocking the blessings and the favor that God was releasing into his life. Praise God. He set up a prince demon. Go block Daniel's blessing. Go block the word from the Lord. For 21 days. Somebody say, but. Oh, my God, when, when you see but, something about to change in the word. You know, you've already got a story, but when you see but, change is coming. It says, lo, somebody ought to say, oh, <laughs> Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. Oh, my God, we ought to cry. God send the help. Send some reinforcement. God, I'm desperate right now. I need a word from you. I need an anointing from you. I need favor from you, God. I need deliverance from you. Send the help, Lord. See, some of us, we know we ought to have been delivered. We know we've been doing what we know to be right. But we have not known how to tap into the spirit realm and cry out for help. I thank God for the angels that are assigned to us. My God, some angels are standing right now in their post, just waiting to hear a word come up out of our mouth that they might be dispatched. Just waiting on us. But we don't realize, praise God, that God has assigned angels to us. So we remain silent. God, send the angels. Send the help. Send the reinforcement. My God, that that thing that's withstanding us might be torn down, God. God, I want to see in the spirit realm. My God, that this church would grow, this church would increase, that the people of God might increase, God. Send the help. We come against every demonic force that's on assignment against us. We break the power of it now. God, we made a determined that we're going to set ourselves apart, even as Daniel, God. Oh, God, we're going to lift up holy hands. We're going to fast. We're going to pray. We're going to live holy before you. God, send the help that we need, that that demon might be overcome, that he might be destroyed, all of his works. Michael, one of the chief priests, princes, came to help me. Oh, in Daniel 12 and 1, it says, as it talks about Michael, He's the great prince who is standing for the children of thy people. Michael has been sent to stand for the people of God. My God, are you a child of the king? God, send Michael if you will. Send, send, send the angels, send the anointed ones. God, send somebody with a word that we might overcome these demons that's holding back what belongs to us. I thank God for somebody with great authority. There is no authority but God. He is the greater one. Amen. See, the, the, the devil, praise God, you know, he, he, has a, he has a little sphere of authority, but God is the greater one. He's the greater one. 
You know, I can just see him in the spirit just looking down on the day. Oh, you're not, yo. He's the greater one. So we have to cry, God, send the great anointing. Send the great anointing. Send the strength that we need. So it was Daniel, as we looked back over in the 10 and 18, it was, it was Daniel that received strength because he was touched by that angel. Amen. We need a touch by the anointed one. I thank God for, for Jesus. Thank God for his anointing. We need a touch from the Lord, y'all. But we got to go up in the spirit realm to receive that touch from the Lord that destroys yokes. Amen. Praise God. We got to understand that a touch from the hand of God can release us into our destiny. Or it can cause us to overcome every spirit that has been sent to stop us. One touch from God. You might have been delayed for years, but one touch from the Lord is able to release you. Y'all ever seen anybody like that? You knew they were crazy. I mean, you knew they had problems in their life. And then all of a sudden they get saved. My God, what happened to them? One touch. Clear up your mind. Take desires away. Take sickness and disease away. One touch. Everybody else dying and you living. <laughs> Everybody else still confused and you're clear-minded. Because of touch from the Lord. God send your anointing. All we need is a touch. All we need is one breath. All we need is one touch of your hand. One word from you, God, is able to release us from bondage. That's all we need. That's all I need. Right now, that's all I need. One touch taking me into my destiny, that place that God has purpose for me. If I'm walking in God's purpose, I have everything that I need. I believe that. If you get in God's purpose and plan, you have everything for you need that you need. You have healing, you have deliverance, you have the, 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 the wealth, you have everything that you need when you're walking up in God's purpose. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. God, I, I want your will. When I'm walking in your perfect will, I got everything that I need. Anybody understand what I'm talking about this morning? But some of us, we got caught up in the thing, in the thing. I'm seeking this thing. I'm seeking that thing. My God, but seek God. Fall on your face, God, I seek you. God, I'm desperate for you. And then one touch. And all of a sudden, you find yourself walking in that thing that you've been longing for. And there's something. That's because a touch from God. That's because of turning your mindset. That's because of turning your heart. That's because of casting out that spirit of doubt and fear and unbelief. All of a sudden, you find yourself walking your destiny, doing what God has called you to do, being victorious, being delivered. It's a good thing to get deliverance, y'all. But I've been there. I mean, when you know you've been delivered, that demon can show up again, and all of a sudden you remember, I, I, I already conquered you. You already been conquered. He's already done that. You understand? When I, somebody know what I'm talking about. Amen. So Daniel was strengthened because he was touched. So let's look at Jeremiah for a minute. See, sometimes God has already spoken into your life and told you who you are. But you still got to deal with some issues. Anybody dealing with issues? You got to get in the spirit realm. It's Jeremiah 1 and 4. It says, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, before I formed in the bell, I knew you. I knew you, boy. I knew what you would become. Were to become before you were formed. Before your mother and your father got together, I knew you. God knows all of us, y'all. Y'all understand that? Do you really believe that? Before 
it will form in the belly I knew thee. Before you came out of the womb, I sanctified you. You know, we got to make this thing personal. That that God is saying to you, that the enemy is trying to push back, trying to hold up, it's what God has already said before you were born. That's what destiny is all about. That's what purpose is all about. When we're talking about God, he did it and he had a plan for us before we came to this earth. Amen? Then he told him, I ordained thee. Amen? I sanctified thee. I, I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. He got specific with him and told him what it was that he wanted to do in his life. But in all of that, here come insecurity. We're talking about walking in our destiny. Amen? We're talking about obtaining what God has called us to do. We got to deal with insecurities. We got to go up in the spirit realm again. Amen? Praise God. It says in the seventh and the sixth verse, Then said I, how many of us are we still talking when God's trying to speak? We were trying to remind God why we haven't obtained this thing. God, don't you know? God, don't you know this? If God tried to tell you who you are and who you are and want to run your mouth and try to talk God out of it. He already told him what it was. And when, even before you were born, this who you are, you're a prophet. You're a prophet to the nation. But all of a sudden, then said I. Anybody there? You still talking. God trying to show you something, take you up in the spirit, and who you talking about. God, don't you know? Don't you know? Don't you know, Lord? Yeah, you, you know me. You know my friend. You know what I did? God, did, didn't you see that? Then said I, ah, oh, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I'm a child. The Lord had to talk back to him. Say not, I am a child. But thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I have commanded thee, thou shalt speak. What I tell you to do, what I tell you to say, speak it. My God, regardless of what it looked like, we got to speak what God has given us to speak. And some of us, we still want to talk back to God. God, speak. Thy servant hears. That's the attitude we got to get. God, whatever you say, wherever you send me, Amen. Whatever you put in my hand, that's what I use. But some of us, we want to talk back to God. God, if, if you just give me that anointing, the sister Jane got, I'll do it. I, I'll conquer the world. I'll conquer the world. And God has anointed you for this task. And here you are, uh, lusting after somebody else's anointing. Y'all ever seen people like that? Want more from God and not using what's already in your hand. Amen. Use those gifts, those talents that he's graced you with, and then increase will come to you. But you got to use it. It's got to be in action. It's got to be in action. Amen? Praise God. So, the eighth verse, uh, ninth verse says, first of all, God told him, I'm, I'm here to deliver you. Then he says, the Lord put forth his hand and he touched my mouth. You got up in the spirit now, boy. But the Lord said, I'm going to touch your mouth. No longer are you going to speak with insecurities and through fear, doubt, unbelief. I'm going to touch your mouth. Somebody say, Lord, touch me. I'm going to speak what you say. Uh, I'm gonna, my speech is going to be in line with the word of God. Some of y'all still talking. That's good. That was a good time to talk. Amen. This day, I have this day set thee over the nations over and over kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build, and to plant. This day I have done it. I want a this day anointed. Anybody there? I, I want an anointing this day. 
There are some things that we got to root up. I tell you, you got to get to the root of the problem to walk in the spirit realm. You got to pour down some things to walk in the spirit realm. See, we got to get to this modern term. We got to throw down. See, some of y'all thought back in the day we came up with that thing. We got to throw down. No, God said it. We got to throw some stuff down. We got to cast down some vain imagination. Throw it down. We got to cast out some fear. Throw it down. Amen. So in order for us to tap into the spirit realm, we got to begin to cultivate some ground. We got to get the ground right, praise God, that God can release what he wants to release. Then he's able to build on it. Then he's able to plant on it, amen, after we've gotten the ground right. We are that ground. Our heart is the ground. Get it right for the Lord, praise God, that he might pour into your life. Talking about our victory in the spirit realm. We got to understand that the greatest opposition that we have, praise God, is in the spirit. As we go over to Ephesians, I'm going to let you go in a few minutes. Praise God. Tell us to be strong in the Lord. Our strength is in the Lord. Praise God. Our strength is in the Lord. My God, our strength is not uh, enjoying no, no bloods, no crips, eh, eh, no uh, MS-13. Our strength is in the Lord. See, the enemy wants us to, 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 to uh, 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 form legions with, with, with something that's unholy, something that's unrighteous. Our strength is in the Lord. Our strength is not in a denomination. Praise God. Our strength is in the Lord. Our strength is not in the church. Praise God that we, that, that we put our name on the road. Our strength is in the Lord. So I sound like I'm angry up here. Something help me, Lord. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. We're talking about uh, overcoming opposition now. In the spirit. Then he went on and says, we need to put on the whole arm of God. We need to armor up. Amen. Praise God. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We got to understand that the war that we're in is not man himself. It's not. See, some of us, we, we got, we at odds with our, 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 our relatives. We at odds with the boss on the job. We just, I wish he just turned his head. I just hit him behind his ear. I, I, just give me a chance to open up a door on him or something. You know, somebody like that, you know. We, 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 we're against the man, but not dealing with the spirit. Amen? But we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We got to go up in the spirit. If we won't change, praise God, we got to go in the spirit realm. Amen? It's time that we come out of the flesh. It's time that we quit swelling up before people. You know, when you see them, you just swell up. Just swell up. Trying to walk tall and on your toes walking. Yeah, I wish, wish you would. Go in the spirit realm. Hey Amen. It's time that we come out of the flesh. We're still talking about having victory in the spirit realm. But we got to deal with some issues. Last scripture, Romans 8. God has given us a way. I, ain't God good to hear give you a road map to come out of something? I give you a road map to walk into your destiny, your victory. Amen. He makes the word so plain. Romans 8 and 35. Who, can, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? I'm going to say to y'all, what separates you from the love of Christ today? What? What is it? Somebody said nothing. Have you arrived? If we have not arrived, something is separating us. If we are still struggling with issues, something has separated us. If we have not attained a victory in every area of our life, something has separated us. The Lord Jesus came. He came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. If we are not walking in abundant life, 
something that separated us. So he just, you know, <laughs> the word of God just speaks. Is there a tribulation or distress? Will that separate you? Somebody said yes it would. But see, somebody still got to deal with some issues. Just be real. A persecution when they when they talk about you, lying on you, slandering your name, shall it separate you? A famine you in lack right now, my God, your 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 your, your, your pantries are bare, no no bank account, shall it separate you? Seem like the Joneses got everything going on, and here you are still with a hoopty. He is out there every morning, Lord. I hope he prays. Anybody got one of them cars? Lord Jesus. Every morning before you get in there, you're just walking around. Just, Lord Jesus. <laughs> just pouring oil. Lord Jesus. Please, Jesus. Please, Jesus. Please, Jesus. Please, Jesus. Please, Jesus. Please, please. Jesus. Jesus. Pump it again. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Just go off in the spirit. <laughs> Some of y'all know you've been there. Don't let it separate you from the Lord. Don't let it separate you because right now you have not arrived. My God, I, I've seen that God has called us into a wealthy place. I'm not there yet, but I'm still driving. I got it crazy. Don't let it separate you when, when your children want to get out in the front of school. Block me out, drop me out two blocks from school. I ain't going to talk about my children like that. No, daddy, that's this good right here. It's good. <laughs> I just have fun myself. I got both of them in here. No, don't drive up home. <laughs> like they talking to a mule. Ho! <laughs> I would not let it separate me from the love of love. I ain't going to let it separate me. I'm coming up out of this whoop. Every time I drive the corner, I got to hold the door so I'm gonna fly I, Oh, I see better days ahead. Oh, my God. See how nakedness separates you. Pearl or swore. Oh, my God, I thank God for a word from the Lord. He said, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that love us. And all that you're going through, if you remain in Christ, you're still more than a conqueror. We can conquer these, these deficiencies in our life. We can conquer the lack in our life if we remain in Christ. We're more than conquerors. More than not just a conqueror, but you're more than. I want to operate in the more than. I want to operate in the overflow. I want to operate in the more than enough. I thank God for that place because the word says to whom much is given as much is required. When you got more than enough, God give you more responsibility. Anybody want more, more responsibility? Thank God for the overflow. He said, I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, saying the same thing, nor, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. If we're going to tap into the spirit realm, where we obtain our victory, we got to step over into Jesus Christ, our Lord. It's in him that we live and move and have our being. Amen? It's in him. It's in Christ Jesus. It's in Christ Jesus that we're able to go up in the spirit realm and have victory over all things. It's in him. It's in him. So we're going to go up higher, y'all. We're going to learn to go boldly to the throne of grace. 
without any wrath, without any doubt, amen, without any confusion, without any unforgiveness being in our heart. And then we're going to begin to tap into the Spirit and see what it is that God has said about us before the foundation of the earth. And not only are we going to see what he said, we're going to be able to see that place of provision for our life, for our ministry, because we've mounted up, hallelujah, and we've tapped in where God is. 